Disney Channel and today we're at the beautiful Levy Farm and look how huge this thing is. So, that thing is massive. So, we can get right to the video. So, today I'm going to teach you the advanced process of solving the Rubik's Cube. But if you're beginners, just click on the top right corner of the video and you'll see the video. That will teach you about beginners. So, first step, scrambling. So, and now that it's scrambled, let's begin it. And the first step is cross. So, first step of solving the cross is finding all the cross pieces. So, we just find all of them. So, one, two, three, four. So, once you found all your cross pieces, then you solve them. So the white and red cross piece can be solved by just, do, just putting it on the bottom layer and doing a D. But before doing that, we can do put the red one in the front and do our prime. And then we just do the, that D move. So, now from this angle, mm, the same exact angle, I can just do an F. But before doing that, I can do a U, so I p preserve this piece. So now from that uh, angle, I did the D move, I can do F. And now the orange and white piece is in its right spot, and now I can just do an L2 from that same spot. So, without cube rotations and without any miss wrong things. Shoot, shoot it. Now, the white is solved. It cross is solved. So now, we have to find the next pieces. The corner and the edge. And this step is called F2L. Well called the first two layers so we have to find a corner a corner that has white on it and an edge that doesn't have yellow on it so we found first step find a corner that has white on it obviously and then find an edge that the corner has other colors like green and orange so we bring that co corner to the top and then uh, other than white on that corner what else could to the color there how did you bring that to the top what is that we used so to bring it on that the top you, you can do there's three types of algorithms you can do r u2 r prime are you our prime or are you prime our prime so that's only if the corner is on the bottom so now other than white what else are the other colors are there there's green and red so you find the edge piece that has green and red so that happens to be here so we hold it We hold it so that the red and green centers are like on the front and on the and right and then we do ye in we do you two to to bring the, the corners into the right spot and then all you do is 
are, you are praying. So, first step, find the corner. And then the other two colors are red and blue. So here's the, the edge that's blue and red. And then put the blue and red centers and put one of the centers on the front and one of the centers on the right. And then just do, and from this angle you just do R, U prime, R prime, U2, F prime, U prime, F. Show us what is solid. This one, the, the red and blue pair. So, the next step is to find a corner with white on it. So, like this corner, and it has blue and orange. <laughs> and then, so you find the orange and blue centers and put it on the front and right, and then that is right in between them. And in this case, you have to do U2, R, U, R prime, U2, R, U, R prime. And then the final one, final corner that has white on it, so the other two colors are green and orange. So here's the green and orange center, edge, I mean. And here's the green and orange center. So we put on the front and on the right. So then you do U prime, R, U prime, R prime, U2, R, U prime, R prime. Now, for OLO, instead of doing like three algorithms, we only do one. But OLO stands for orienting the last layer. So it's basically on the yellow side in one step. So in this case, we hold it so that these two, these two bars are in like the front and right positions and you do F, R prime, F prime, R2, R prime, U, R, U prime, R prime, U prime, and prime. And as you see the entire, <coughs> excuse me, white layer, yellow layer, is solved. <laughs> And so now, every PLL has its own name. So, a PLL stands for permuting the last layer. So, in this case, this PLL is called a Z-perm. So, you hold it so that... What is it called a Z-perm? A Z-perm looks like that all the corners are solved and it's basically two adjacent swaps. So why it's called a Z perm? It's because if you draw the two lines that are like arrows that like swap around these things, then you have two horizontal or uh, horizontal lines. And then if you draw a line like this, you get the letter Z. So and that's how every single pe Jenga. Bricks falling. <laughs> Jingle bricks falling in the background. So, in this case, all the pillows are named like that. It's like the arrows that are like swap arrows uh, make a letter. So, in this case, we hold it so that the adjacent swaps are in front and the, the two pieces that we want to swap, any of the ones. And are in the front and right. And you do M prime, U prime, M2, U prime, M2, U prime, M prime, U2, M2, 
you. Huh? Now you solve the Rubik's Cube in the advanced way. So now you solve the last layer in two algorithms. Like, that's so much less. So for the last layer, there are 72 cases. So each algorithm has its own specific algorithm. So basically 72 algorithms, as you can call it too. Um, yeah, there's actually 78, I remembered. Oh, okay. Okay. So, there's 78 algorithms to solve the last layer. And so, every case has its own specific algorithm. So, it's really, you can basically call it the 72 algorithms, too. So, stay tuned for that. It's coming really soon. And like, subscribe, and hit the notification button if you not already did.